Welcome back to Baruto Anime Review, episode number 220, I believe this was 6, no, 27, called Team 7, The Last Mission. Yes. The best thing you can describe with this episode is more like an epilogue to the tuning re-examination arc. That's pretty much what this is, just, just, just an epilogue to it, because... We just wrapped up this very brief story arc that only lasts just for a handful of episodes. We're just like, wow, haven't come across a story arc this short, not since, oh, I don't know, uh, Steam Ninja Scrolls, maybe? Mm hmm. So this one is this basically, Sada is basically going to be promoted to tuning. And of course, she is a little anxious because, well, she got her tuning vest, but she hasn't gone through the ceremony just yet, per se, even though she is technically tuning. So her mom is there. Yeah, Sakura is in several scenes this episode, which is quite surprising. We even see return to this episode of Mari's mom. Koronai. Yep, she returns. Uh, first time since the same Ninja Scrolls arc she returns. I'll, I'll get to her, don't worry. So, pretty much she's a little anxious. Of course, they have to submit some paperwork about her being appointed to the full captain for Team 7. And without Konohama around. And Baruto doesn't have a really big issue with it. And according to Baruto, here's the thing. According to him, basically this happened all the time in in his dad's era, basically Naruto's era. Yeah, this basically is true. But the thing is, out of the of the Hidden League 12, only like two of them never made, made past Genin. Though I'm not really sure what size rank is, given the fact he wasn't technically made a Genin or Chunin. Yeah, that's the thing about Sai. It's a bit unknown exactly how the heck to measure him per se. You could say he's equivalent to a Joni. It's possible. He was from the Amu Black Ops. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Let's see, what rank is Sai? Shinobu? That's what uh, his rank is. <clears throat> yeah, so... <laughs> so... With this, well, basically we have Konohamaru absent for this episode. Well, he's absent. He's on a mission. He was asked to go on a mission to, to, to escort people, to escort a, a married couple, just because he was free. And he's there with his cousin Mari, which we actually just saw her just a few episodes ago. It was actually in the very first episode of the tuning tuning reexam marks. So it's not been that long for her. Her mom has been quite longer than that. So. After she goes like off the mission, and then we have the day end with her basically lying at in front of the gate, and I don't know who found her. It could be any one of the random villagers. Of course, she is at the hospital, and of course, Baruto is basically uh, obviously worried about her, given the fact how close they are. And we see Koronai there now. Koronai, like I just said, this actually the episode here is her first appearance since the Steam Ninja Scrolls arc. That was her last appearance officially in the series. And that was a long time ago. That was like past like episode 100. So this is the first appearance in two years in the anime. Because that's the last time I personally remember it seeing her in the anime. Mm-hmm. Yep. And she is here just to be alongside her daughter. Which I, I, I just noticed as though with this episode. It looks like she looks a little bit paler. Like, why is her skin turning chalk white for? I don't really... I think that she be a little bit pigmented in that, but wow... Yeah, I know, well, you could say because of the poisoning, but she definitely does look a little different than what she was last seen in the series. Yeah, she had to basically be fake being poisoned in order to get away from a group of villager, a group in this village, which apparently the person took it home for is a guy called Hugo of the Hundred Faces, which Konohamaru does know about him because he's in the Bingo books. He's from the, formerly from the Hidden Grass. Like, okay. 
So if he's of 100 faces, is is the face he has, the episode, is that his true face? Don't know, because they don't really go into, like, why he left the village, why he abandoned it. It's like, oh, we just abandoned used to be part of a shinobi part of a hidden grass. I'm like, okay. So, basically, I'm going to harm her, basically, when they get detailed information about the mission. Team 7 just volunteers to go, and Naruto's like, that's fine. You can go. I mean, due to the fact that they, 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 they which are really well, it's better to send some random, uh, some random ninja. Like, let's say if they send Team Ten out there to rescue Konohamaru, they have no chemistry with him. So, has any Team Ten to go rescue Konohamaru makes total sense to do. So they go to rescue him. And of course, they're over the village. Of course, he's getting beaten up. And of course, they really want the access to the sensor information network. Why the heck they want to do that? Uh, my guess is they probably want to invade the village, possibly, because they took over this village pretty easily. And Colonel Harmer was really waiting, he was waiting for something. Turns out it was actually the fog to come in. But luck of Team 7 got there, knows what the heck is going on. Once the fog got in, apparently off-screen is showing that Team 7 took out the other henchmen. So we have Bart posing in his sexy jutsu attire. Yes, so apparently he picked up a jutsu from his father, the sexy jutsu. By the way, this is a very weak jutsu, and Konoha... Now, here's the thing. Baruto was one of the three people who pulled this off in the series. The other two being Konohamaru and Naruto himself. Though Naruto doesn't do it anymore, probably because he's he's married, and he doesn't need to do it. But Baruto, my guess is Konohamaru must teach it to him because, well, it is so hilarious. It is, <laughs> it's so funny, the fact that, oh, I'm just some random traveler who just happened to come across this village. And of course, you know who are you? and of course yeah, you guys like who are you? He just smiles and he jumps into the bar. So, I'm bar to Zamaki hit the leaf. And of course, Hugo of course is taken out by the combined team of well, using this with such a wind maneuver that bar to uses, where it has like two people who use wind jutsu and pushes Konohamaru far enough where he takes out Hugo ton of faces, which makes sense for him to do because he's a Joni. because. Satana so could do it, but she could get some trouble some trouble to it, but since of course Konohamaru is a Joni, it makes perfect sense for him to do it. Yep. And they all go home. And of course he's sad about the fact he's like with Captain this team before, but Sana would probably go to him for advice. But he still would technically be your sensei. And in the case uh and then the episode ends with the Chunin the basically most all the people who made Chunin in the very last episode. I, oh, and by the way, the episode ends without answering the, the question what happened in mean, the last, last episode. Who won the fight between Baruto and Mitsuke? Because the very next episode, they're perfectly fine. Either they fought or they didn't. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And, of course, well, Sa Sa Sakura thinks they should do a celebration. Sa Sa Sasuke is in the episode. He's given, like, one brief line. That's it. Of course, we have this one really, really hilarious ending to the episode where we have Konohamaru just reenacting the famous uh, Team 7 pose, where he stand behind and put his hand on top of the, of the male members of the team and the female member in the middle. Which, by the way, this is actually the nod to Team Minto. Excuse me, that's where this came from. And in that photo, we had Minto putting his hand on top of the head of Kakashi and Obodo with Rin in the middle, and then, of course, the original Team Savvy, Kakashi who puts his hands out of Naruto and Sasuke and with Sakura in the middle. And of course, also, like, this is one of those occasions where, like, two pictures in a row where, basically, we actually have where a member is related to, like, someone who's on that previous team, or at least related to the previous member, and taking their, pretty much taking their spot in the photo. Like, in the case of between the team, the team Sinfo and this one, you have Baruto taking his father's spot, and you have Sa Sakura, not sorry, Sa Sakura taking, of course, her mother's spot in the photo. And I thought it was great, the fact that they had a chance to do it, and of course, uh, it's something from, we finally got a chance to the picture even taken. Because it's implied, basically, the picture happened off screen, but it's great the fact Sakura showed off the actual original Team 7 photo. This, of course, pre-time skip. Oddly enough, there is no post-time skip of the Team 7 lineup which they had, which was Kakashi, Sakura, Naruto, and Sai. 
yeah, there's no pitcher in that lineup at all. I mean, you could say my 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 mouse pad here, which is from the uh, Ash the Ash Revenge arc. This is probably the closest you can get to an actual pitcher from it. Yeah, and this is from that very arc. And you're probably thinking, where the heck did I get this wonderful looking mouse pad, even though I've had this for now for about a few years. Uh, there's actually a shop where, where I live that actually sells this stuff. I got this I got this mouse pad uh, the same time I got uh, Bleach Season 2. Yeah, I got it the very same day. Because I like Naruto. I don't, The only thing I own from Naruto is some of the anime stuff or manga. This actually is the first merchandise I've actually got related to Naruto. That's not part of the anime or manga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course, one thing that I have seen this series is that a lot of the time, yeah, we tend to nostalgize part one of Naruto a lot, but not much remembering about part two very much. I mean, the only thing they bring up for part two is the Fourth Great Ninja War and the death of Ashura. Ashura, and that's pretty much it. Well, you also could say bring up the Third Okage. Mm hmm. Yep. But well, the episode itself was pretty good. I did like the fact that Mari got no lines. I mean, she's in the episode, and yet she gets no lines. Apparently, she just gives the, if, or the, the, well, her lines off screen. So, hey, Nima Corona, you bring her back for the first time in two years, and you give her zero lines. Yeah. You don't like about it? It's basically her showing up. But no lines for Mari's mom. Who still looks absolutely fantastic for her age. This probably be only in her early 40s. She looks really good. I mean, she looked like she didn't age very much in that period of time. Oh no, she didn't. I mean, I presume she's probably... That age. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's see, 15 years? Well, if in fact that she was like 32 at the end of part 2, I'd say she's probably about 47. Yeah, 47. That's pretty much how old she is. I mean, look at the picture of her. She, she looked like she didn't age all that much. She still kept her, she still kept her hair the same color. Aside from the fact she's got a little bit of wrinkle around her eyes, she looks absolutely fantastic. And the thing is, if anybody's ever watched the original Naruto series, or Naruto Shuden, like, for the adult women, Koronai was one of the most beautiful women in the original series. Yes, along with Anko when she was younger. Yeah, Anko was hot. Like, and she looked really good for her age. That's why I think at the time she was only in her early 20s. At least probably mid-20s when, when the series ended. Now she's overweight. That was one thing I didn't like about the time scale when it came to, uh, to Anko. That she put on weight. Uh, May, who was the Tazakai, who was former the Tazakagi of the Hidden Rain Village, she she looked like she put a little bit of weight, but not as much as Anko. But she looked absolutely fantastic. Yeah, she looked absolutely great. Okunai was probably the only one who practically never aged at all because he was always an old man. The only thing that really changed on him is basically his back got worse when he got older. Parents wise, he looked exactly the same. But what about the Razakage? He definitely did look like he aged a little bit, despite the fact at the time, when I think in the original series, he was probably in his 40s. Yeah, he was actually in his late 40s when, when Part 2 started. And in the current era, uh, I'm looking at a picture of him right now. I mean, aside from the fact that he pretty much lost some of his hair. Uh, yeah, he lost some of his hair on top of his head, but appearance-wise, he didn't change very much at all. He's probably in his 60s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd probably say so. 15 years, so I'd say... 60, 
But not much else to say about the episode itself. It's definitely a good episode. And what about next week? Next week is going to focus on Kawanaki. Yes. But it's not an adaptation of the manga. Oh no, because the manga goes in a completely different direction. But who knows when they're going to go to the current stuff they do in the manga. It'll probably be a long time before they get a chance to do it. So, they're probably going to spend this time developing him. Because the manga hasn't developed him that much. Per se, because he's already fighting... Co- him and Bard's fighting Code right now in the manga. Yep. So, yeah. Excuse me. That's it for Circle of View. Next one. One Piece. Even though I've already done One Piece. Say I did re- I did an anime review of the dub. Now on to the current stuff. Okay? Thanks for you. Bye.